certain way in which they should carry themselves even before God. Now, David did not believe in that. David said, well, I may be a king today, but who made me a king? Who chose me in the place of your dad? Your dad's plan was to wipe me out. If God had not come to my defense, this day would never have happened. He said, so I will not only do it, I will do it again. I will even do it better. And I believe today somebody will worship the Lord better. And forget yourself. That was what David did that day. He forgot himself. Forgot himself. Forgot himself. Kept his crown aside. The people must have been surprised. They said, it will be easy. He put his crown aside. From KBC today, who made me KBC? Is it not God? And he exalted God in his heart. And he exalted God. In the way in which he danced. And obviously in the way in which he sang. Wow. No wonder God loved this man so much. Because David was a man who, despite the fact that he was lifted by God again and again, he never forgot his roots. May you never forget your roots. Hello, mean what alone, but in Luma, the head begins, becomes too big for the cap. It's a dangerous thing. I say it often here. God is using you. Yes, we know. You give messages everywhere. You've preached in over 50 countries in the world. We know. God has given you a song. People wait to hear you sing. We know. There's an anointing upon your life. We know. But all of these things came to you from God. You must never forget your own roots. You must never forget how you started. You must never forget that apart from the grace of God, every one of us is nothing but a bundle of flesh. It's God that elevates. It's God that uses. It's God that glorifies. May you not steal the shoe from God. Forget yourself when you come to church, please. Forget that you are a managing director. Forget that you have eight cars. If you have those eight cars legitimately, it was God who helped you to have those eight cars. How can you forget and make it seem as if you are the alpha and the omega of your own life? If somebody is suffering from pride here, may the Lord cure you today in the name of Jesus. God hates pride. No other person in the whole Bible carried the kind of punishment she carried. God was so upset with her. He said, Micah. He said, okay, I will make you an object lesson for the whole world. You will carry this shame to the day you die. Wow. In Jesus' name, you will not do something that will make God annoying. As God is so patient, when you see God, he is annoying. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He said, look, Michael will not only be barren, she will be barren to the day she dies. So I want everybody to know that anybody that walks in pride is an abomination in my sight. May the Lord help you to be humble. All of us can do with a little bit more humility. We are not nearly as humble as we should be. Pride is something we were born with. It's God who saves us from ourselves. We are born like that. Even people who are quiet are proud by nature. By nature, we are all very proud. But the one displayed by this lady was excessive. The kind of pride that somebody will bring into God's presence. The kind of pride that will make you look down on somebody that is exalting God. That is too much. That kind of pride is too much. Are you a proud person? How do you relate with people? You look down. And I think from what I know, many people come from royal families in the world. They suffer this kind of thing. I'm of you been here when they took you. Look down people. They rise in flashy cars. They've been to London. One of my daughters in the Lord told me, he said, 
He said, sir, you were just talking. He said, my dad used to tell me those days, before I was born again, that I have enough money to make you eat breakfast in Lagos, lunch in London, and dinner in New York. One of my daughters in the Lord, and she was right. Her father was a judge, member of the Court of Appeal those days. Died a long time ago. He said, my dad used to tell us that I can move you from flight to fly, flight so that you take your breakfast in Lagos, you eat your lunch in London, and take dinner in New York. Well, maybe you are from that kind of family where they are so rich. But the greatest wealth is with God. In Jesus' name, nobody will be so penalized the way that Saul's daughter was penalized. I don't know longer. You are not dancing to me. He's dancing to me. Praise the Lord. Who are you to be assessing him? You didn't dance to me. Did I, did I say anything? That somebody else is worshipping me. Who are you to be rebuking him? And that's something you must never do. We are all different. I said we are all different. Some people, this is their way. They will be dancing to the Lord. Some people are very good at dancing. And they do it for the Lord. They will look on there. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean you are more you are more serious than anybody else just because you are like this. I mean, that, that's the way you are. It's okay. But you have no right to look at somebody else and be penalizing them in your heart. Whatever we do, we do to our God. And I pray that your worship and praise today will be most acceptable in his sight in the name of Jesus. May the Lord be so impressed with you and bless you and bless you. And like David, lift you above all the antics of your enemy. May the Lord be so delighted in you that it causes you to be a star for generations. I will share a few things with you on why people do not express gratitude to God. Because it's something we ought all to be doing on a regular basis. Gratitude to God is a debt that we owe. And we cannot finish paying until we leave this world. Every one of us ought to be expressing our gratitude to him. And thanking him and praising him. You wake up in the morning. You thank him that you woke up in that morning. You take your food. There's one prayer that was called grace before meals those days. They don't teach children that anymore. There was grace before meals. Before you go to bed at night, you thank him. Because not everybody who started the day finishes it. You give him thanks and give him appreciation. Why is it that people do not Express gratitude to God the way they should. I will remind you of some reasons. But before I do that, if you look at Luke 17, it talks about 10 lepers. And then it says that all of them in verse 12 of verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And the Bible says in verse 12, all of those 10 lepers stood afar off. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are all lepers by nature. We are all lepers by nature. Sin, there is no leprosy like sin. It's the ultimate leprosy. 
Bible says they stood afar off. Because among the Jews, they were regarded as people who should not mix with the others. So they stood afar off. Cure for leprosy had not then been discovered. Even now that there is a cure, you know when the leprosy is acute, they keep them out of town. That's why you have Ukebala, where he worked for some years. I've been there before to see him. And it's a leprosarium. And they keep lepers there because it's contagious if it's not well treated. Lepers by nature. And but for the mercy of God, it's a kind of leprosy that has no cure. The only cure is the blood of Jesus. The leprosy of sin is the ultimate leprosy. And it is contagious. Because when one sinner gives birth to a child, the Bible says in sin we were all conceived. In iniquity where we were born. We were all born like that. We came with that contamination. And only God is able to save us from it. Bless his holy name forevermore. They cried from where they were. <coughs> they cried for help. And everybody can do that. You don't need anybody to teach you to cry for help when you really need help. You automatically cry. You shed tears. Some roll on the ground and say, oh, is no Everybody knows how to cry when you are in pain. Everybody knows how to cry when you have a dire need. When your need is dire, nobody needs to lecture you to cry. You cry. You roll on the ground. You fast. Why? Because you are desperate. That's why. You know you must receive help. And you know God is able to do it. So you cry. At that level, we don't need to tell people to cry. Especially when there are problems, unusual problems. Where we have problems is when it comes to give God praise. Suddenly we find the same people who cried the other day, now they begin to get sophisticated when it comes to saying thank you to God. You have to literally beg them to open their mouths and thank God. I pray that that will not be true of you. But by nature we are like that too, in varying degrees. You, if you put side by side the way we bother God, when we have palavas, and the way we just say the thing, when God has done it, it's a far cry. It's a far, far cry. We say, is it not the first thing that Je Jesus said, were there not ten that I helped the other day? They said, yes, sir. I want to go and call. That's human nature. But by the grace of God, may you not fit into that class. The class of the nine who are anonymous in the day of thanksgiving. The, cl the class of the nine who do not know how to come back to say thank you. And the Lord was so touched, negatively speaking. He said, where are they? Where are the nine? Seneca Konu only sokwe me in shin kafa wone. I healed all of them. Wone bene. Only where are the nine? At the grace of God, when it comes to thanking God, you will not be absent. You will not be anonymous. As they hear the voice of God, People who want to give thanksgiving or are giving thanksgiving to God in heaven, may they hear your voice also. The other day you didn't allow God to rest. Lord have mercy on me. Lord visit me. Lord do this. Lord. Now he has done it. And now he can no longer cry in thanksgiving. He just must say it the way he wants to. But in the case of the Samaritan, he didn't do it like that. He went, he came back. It was a deliberate thing. He came back. Today, I'm asking you to come back and thank God. He deserves your praises. He deserves your thanks. Because so many things. There's no time to begin to consider why you must come back and give him praise. You yourself, you know what God has done for you. You know. 
That if it were not for his mercies, you, have been, you would have been wiped out. That if it were not for his grace, you would not be here today. That if it were not for his loving kindness, you would not be talking here. You would not be seen with your eyes. You would not be sitting with your buttocks. It is the grace of God that is keeping you here in our midst. Otherwise, I look me But Jesus, yeah. And in the name of Jesus, He will not allow the enemy to consume you. Okay, okay. Even when you don't feel it in the chemistry of your body, you force yourself. In Yoruba philosophy, they say somebody to whom good has been done, who does not know how to say thank you, it's as if a robber has robbed you. You all know that. You, you all know that proverb. But do you know it's a proverb that is true of most of us when it comes to thanking God? Have you thanked him today? You put that cup of water in your mouth and you drank it. Have you thanked him for having water to drink? Don't you know there are places in the world where people have no water to drink? Every time you take food and put it in your mouth, remember there are human beings who are starving in another part of the world. You must not take it for granted. Every time you eat what you like, many of you, it's hard, it's tough, but you still eat what you like. <laughs> you say, Mommy, you're not my jealous on you. And by the grace of God, you eat it. There are many people in many places in the world who have nothing to even eat. But you are not one of them. And by the grace of God, you will not be one of them. Where is your gratitude? That is the question that Jesus was asking. Where are the nine? It's a very deep and broad question. Where are the nine? Where is it that people are so ungrateful? The sin of ingratitude is a common sin, even among brethren. Somewhere in the book of Psalms, it says, Praise waited for thee in Zion. It's only in Zion that praise is waiting for God. When will you deliver the praise? But by the grace of God, you will deliver your own. I said you will deliver your own. This day is a day in which we ought to remind ourselves of so many things. Answered prayers. Things you did not even pray for that God did for you. When some people died in your very vicinity, but you were protected. Hello? Or maybe you were told a story by your mother that when you were a baby, helpless, in that court where they put you, something, oh, where was I the other day? And somebody was saying, okay, it was Pastor Anjori, that when he was a baby, they said measles killed so many babies in their village. I think you remember. And me calling you now. All the babies who died, what did they do? They didn't do anything. Life is not a matter of what you did or you did not do. What can you know? Till today, we can't explain. Only but, in some way, in the grace of God, he was kept. He did not die. Those were the days in which medicine was very rudimentary. In their village, we couldn't go. Hospital will not tell them. Dispensary at best. It was not the vaccination, but God in his mercy said, Sir, I'm you you are mine, you will not die. If he's 70 now, he must remember that. It is not by his power. It is not because he's clever. It is because God is gracious. Where's the amen for that? I'm going to you back, this is where I deny Till today, I don't have the answer. Maybe the nine were thinking because only one of them was a Samaritan, so the others were Jews. So, where are anything? Familiarity, they say, breeds. They say, Jew, we can, Apadi, we'll see next time. <laughs> we can thank him next time, we'll see. Whereas when you were in need, you didn't say next time. You didn't say next time, no. 
Immediately you were looking out for him and when you saw him, you were yelling on the top of your lungs. Now that he has done it, you are economizing. Where are the nine? But I say in the name of Jesus, God has taught you and by the grace of God, you will not be an ingrate. You will not only thank God with your lips, you will thank God with your very life. That you are alive, you owe to God. And by the grace of God, you will make a difference for Jesus Christ. Where the Lord has positioned you, that place will not be empty. You will occupy that seat to the glory of God. Because you are sitting there by grace. And you will let God know that you are grateful. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's how life is. You know it. I'm just reminding you of what you have always known. I think it was yesterday. My wife showed me something that somebody posted to her. I took this tool and I drew close to where she was sitting and I sat down. And maybe some of you have seen it. A lady, a lady in Lagos, fully dressed in her own car, drove to a petrol station in Falomon and started removing her dress. I removed everything. And after removing everything, she grabbed one of the pump, petrol pumps, and started spraying people. How many of you saw it? We are composed there, Zinni. And started spraying people. Madame, with her own car. Oh, oh, naked. No pants, nothing. Oh, that bad petrol pump. Oh, that bad. Oh, that bad. Same way. Tickney about the body. No, stos. I know. Everybody there would die. But God did not let it happen. And she was spraying everybody with petrol. With petrol. Hey, hey, hey. So, I was telling my wife, but she said, I'm going to go. Oh, let's go. Oh, you let me go. Many people ran away first. A lady. She fell over in the next few minutes. She dominated the place. I was spraying these people. I was spraying them as, with all her nakedness. Then I think it occurred to some Then some of them became bold and ran. About ten of them. Because obviously some demons must be walking in her. And they carried her in her nakedness. And carried her into the car. Ah, as a preacher, I can't tell us. Tears were not far from my eyes. Well, I am going to lay to sell it. See why? Family can look to lay to buy. Yahweh and the candy buy. And they carried her. And the rest is history. In the name of Jesus, it will not happen to you. Fully dressed lady. Ask them to post it to you. A number of people have it. Me really since I was born. And she was using the pump to attack people. But by the grace of God, by the whole thing will have caught fire. Because the whole petrol station, there was petrol everywhere. She was spraying it.
from them. How that with many people, it's a great task. They have to, they have to be helped to be able to do it. I have seen, I have heard of intelligent people who didn't graduate. So I'm standing before you now, one of the most brilliant persons that I ever knew went to ABU. He didn't graduate. Very intelligent. He just got to what we used to call part two those days and he went mad. He didn't, I'm going to say. All of us that knew, ah, Lawrence. Very brilliant. How much you? He looks a lebai. Maybe you gave him what we call a grota degree. I never heard of that. So a grota degree means they knew if nothing had happened to him, he would have done very well. So and he was already a semi-finalist. So they just gave him that so so that he would go with something. And not long after he died. That is the story of life. Bow your heads, everybody. And ask God for the grace to know how to thank God. You can't thank God too much. God has these doctors now. They themselves may even be thinking, but even doctors can be sick. Even doctors do that. Ah. That lady, I'm a, I'm a word seven to be loved. With her key, she drove herself to that petrol station. <laughs> she drove herself to that petrol station. Beautiful woman. She drove herself there. We don't know where she is now. By the grace of God in Christ, you
is that you will be closer to him this second half of the year. You will be a vessel of honor in the second half of the year. You will not be on the same spot this second half of the year. By the grace of God, you will be in the front row of people who serve the Lord this second half of the year. If you have not been a serious believer, it's time to rededicate yourself to him, consecrate yourself to him. Say, take my life. Let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Finally, in the name of Jesus, this second half, particularly today, joy and testimony, you will receive God's answer to your situation. I said you will receive God's answer to your situation. But God must see that there is a true demonstration of gratitude from your heart to him. When the leaders as the singers stand before the Lord to lead the people in worshiping the Lord, you must do your own the best way you can. Because God is an assessor. God is an assessor. The day they were giving offering, Jesus said, do you know who gave most in this service? They said, no. So God assesses the things we do. One of let's him up. Opening your name now. Oh, she gave all she had. Even though to you, you will say it's nothing. But she put down all she had. So God assesses us. Every time you do anything before the Lord, he's, assess, he's our final assessor. You know, they don't joke with final examiner in the university. Because if the man comes and look at, looks at your thesis and tears it apart, you are not making that degree. God is our final assessor. And by the grace of God, you will do well with him. I said you will do well with him. If people are clapping for you, don't look at that. May they clap for you in heaven. I said may they clap for you in heaon. Assessments to people by is PDP APC. It's nothing. Politics now. But the assessment in heaven is the final assessment. If they say you have two one here, and God looks at you and says he doesn't even have a pass, what he says is the final assessment. But in the name of Jesus, you will pass with the Lord. Everything you do, you will do it from your heart. You will do it in your own way. You will do it the best way. Lemo Sataya. Everlasting Father, I stand before your people in the grace that you have given to me. And I say on this day of joy and testimony, as many as the enemy has kept in a tight situation, by the name of Jesus, I decree their release. He says on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. As many as the enemy has put in a tight squeeze, in the name of Jesus, I decree your release. Say so you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. In the name of Jesus, I decree your release. You will not be strangulated. You will not be suffocated. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release you to be what you were born to be. In the name of Jesus, I release you to fulfill your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I release you to be a blessing to your generation. In the name of Jesus. And as you come before the Lord and give him praise and gratitude in your own way, may the Lord accept your sacrifice. May the Lord bless you for it. I said may the Lord bless you for it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.